Let us explore a nice inequality which is called the Cauchy Schwartz inequality, which is a well known inequality to prove inequalities that are being asked in math contests and even to solve IMO problems which are related to inequalities. So the inequality states that given any two real sequences u1, u2 up to un and v1, v2 up to vn, we have the following inequality holds. When we take u1 square plus u2 square up until un square, and we multiply it by v1 square plus v2 square up until vn square, we see that the product of these two sum is greater than or equal to u1 v1 plus u2 v2 up until un vn, and we have the whole thing squared. And if you want to rewrite it in the form of summation, we have that. The above inequality can be rewritten in the form of this way. And so, before we prove the general case, which we have n terms in each sequence, I want to consider the case when n is equal to 2. So we just have u1 square plus u2 square, v1 square plus v2 square is greater than or equal to u1 v1 plus u2 v2 squared. And now we can actually consider two vectors where we let the u vector which have the component u1 and u2 and the vector v which have the component v1 and v2 and the vectors u and v are two-dimensional real vectors in a two-dimensional plane. So now if you look closely, you may actually realize that the left-hand side is essentially just the product of the magnitude of each factor squared. And then we have the right-hand side of the inequality is actually just the square of the dot product. But then we can immediately see that this is actually true since one is greater than or equal to the cosine theta squared. So we have the magnitude of the vector u squared and the magnitude of the vector v squared is really just greater than or equal to the dot product squared. So we have proven the case when n equals to 2. And then actually not forgetting that you may also want to check that quality holds if and only if the vector u is in the same or opposite direction as the vector v. Or there is also another case if one of them is actually a zero vector. So now we'll look at a more general case where we have n terms in this sequence. So to prove the more general case, we can actually use an elementary way to prove it. Where we first consider the function f of x is equal to u1x minus v1 square plus u2x minus v2 square plus etc. up until unx minus vn the whole thing squared. So now you can immediately notice that this function f of x is greater than or equal to zero. Since f of x is just the sum of square terms where each term is bigger than or equal to zero. So now let's actually expand out f of x. And so we can actually rewrite the whole thing as we have the summation from i equals to 1 to n of the sum of ui squared times by x squared minus 2 times by the summation when i equals to 1 to n of ui times by vi times by x plus 
constant part, which is just the summation from i equals to 1 to n, where we sum over vi squared. So now, you can actually notice that f of x is actually a quadratic function with second degree. Moreover, since f of x is greater than or equal to 0, we can see that it has either no real roots or a repeated real root. So what this tells us is that the discriminant of f of x is less than or equal to zero. So therefore, we actually have the discriminant, which is the coefficient of the x term square, and this is four times by the summation from i equals to one to n of ui times by vi, the whole thing square, minus four times by the coefficient of x square term, which is the summation when i equals to one to n of ui square times by the constant part, which is the summation from i equals to one to n of vi square, and we will set it to be less than or equal to zero. So this actually gives us our desired inequality, which is actually just the Cauchy Schwartz inequality, where we have the summation from i equals to 1 to n of ui squared times by the summation from i equals to 1 to n ei squared is greater than or equal to the square of the summation from i equals to 1 to n ui times by vi. So we have proven our inequality. But what about the equality case? Well, if we have equality, we essentially want this to be equal to zero. By noticing that each term is a square, we want each term to be equal to zero. And so we have that equality holds when u1x minus v1 equals to 0, u2x minus v2 equals to 0, etc. until unx minus vn equals to 0. And then what all this equation tells us is that if you solve for each of them, you can actually get that u1 over v1 is equal to u2 over v2 and they are all equal to un over vn and you can also say that they are actually equal to k but k is a real number so therefore we have proven this inequality so now before we end this video we actually want to look at the corollary of the cauchy schwarz inequality, which is the Titus lemma. And this lemma is also really well known and useful in proving many types of inequality, which it states that given a real sequence a1, a2 up to an, and a positive real sequence b1, b2 up to bn, we have the following inequality holds, which is a1 square over b1 plus a2 square over b2 up until an square over bn greater than or equal to, we take the sum of a n, all the terms of a n, and we square it over the sum of b n. So to prove this is actually quite simple. But we just take the sequence in our previous case, which is the u i, to be equal to a i over square root of b i, and b i to be equal to the square root of b i. And you can notice that the reason why the lemma requires a positive real sequence of v1, v2 up to vn is because we want the ui and vi to be real sequence since they are taking the square root of vi. And so by taking these two sequence and we plug them in into our inequality, we shall get that a1 squared over v1 plus a2 squared over 
e2 up until an squared over bn times by b1 plus b2 up until bn. And this is greater than or equal to the sum of product of each term of the two sequence, which you get a1 plus a2 up until an square. And by dividing the sum of the b terms both sides, we get the desired lemma. And so we are done.